Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call to order this meeting of the uh, 5th of January 2023 City and National Planning Board. Can we get a roll call, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mayor Donches. Mike Peterson. Here. Scott LeClaire. Here. Adam Barley. Here. Maggie Harper. Here. Alderman Clean. Here. Dan Hudson. Here. Bob Bollinger. Here. Larry Hirsch. Here. Mark Meehan and Alderman Tebow. Here. Okay, so we have a quorum. We're gonna keep moving forward with our agenda here. Uh, first up, we have um, minutes from the December 1st, 2022 planning board meeting. Has anybody on the board had a chance to take a look at those? We wanna make a motion as to whether they're ready for us to accept as written or need amendments? Mr. Hirsch? Move to accept the minutes. All right, so we have a motion by Mr. Hertz to accept the December 1st, 2022 minutes as written. Do we have a second? A second. Second by Alderman Clee. Any further discussion by the board? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, any abstentions? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, abstain. Okay, so one abstention, all the rest are uh, in favor. So that motion passes. So communications? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the planning board, uh, you've received only one additional communication. That's for case A220240, and that's 14B Railroad Square, correspondence from uh, Prunier and Pullman Attorneys at Law. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, any reports from committees? Uh, I have none. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read the uh, procedure of the meeting. So the procedure of the meeting and hearings will be as follows. After each legal notice of each conditional special use permit, site plan, or subdivision is read by myself, the board will first determine if the application is complete and ready for us to take jurisdiction. If we do take jurisdiction, a public hearing will begin, at which time the applicant or their representative will be given time to present an overview and description of their project. They'll speak to whether or not they agree with the recommended staff stipulations, and the board will have an opportunity to ask relevant follow-up questions of the applicant or staff. I'll then ask for testimony from the audience. I'll ask first for anybody wishing to speak in opposition or concern to the plan. Um, if you desire, go ahead and come forward to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. This is your time to express concerns or ask any questions you may have of the plan. Next, I'll ask for testimony for anybody wishing to speak in favor of the plan. The board will then ask any relevant follow-up questions of the applicant. Uh, I'll then give the applicant a rebuttal period, at which time they'll speak to any of the concerns raised by the public testimony. After this is completed, the public hearing will end. The board will resume a public meeting, at which time we'll deliberate and vote on the application before us. I'd ask that everyone keep their remarks to the subject at hand and not repeat anything that's already been said. The board wants to be fair to everybody and make the best possible decision based on the testimony presented and considering all applicable, applicable approval criteria established in our national revised ordinances for conditional special use permits, site plans, and subdivision plans. I'll thank everybody for their interest and their attention. And if you do have a cell phone, please put it on vibrate or turn it off at this time. Okay, moving through the agenda, old business conditional special use permits, there are none. Uh, old business subdivision plans, uh, case numbers A21-0299, uh, A21-0300, and A21-0301, and A21-0302 were all tabled at previous meetings to the January 19th meeting. Um, first up, what I'm going to hear, and it's slightly out of order on the paperwork here, um, I'm going to go now to... Uh, new business site plan. This is case number A22-0250. Uh, this is Buckley-Amherst LLC owner. It's an application and acceptance of a proposed one-year extension to NR1763 show a restaurant and lounge up to 350 seats. This property is located at 546 Amherst Street. So, um, First up from the board, has anybody had a chance to take a look at this site plan application? I want to make a motion as to whether it's ready for us to take jurisdiction. 
Mr. Bollinger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to accept uh, new business site plan case A22 0250. All right, so we have a motion to uh, take into jurisdiction A22 0250. Do we have a second? Second by Ms. Harper. Any further discussion by the board? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. That motion passes. We have jurisdiction. Uh, so we have somebody from the applicant that wants to just present this extension. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Ethan Beals. I'm a project manager at Hainer Swanson, doing business at 3 Congress Street here in Nashua, New Hampshire. Here tonight representing Buckley Amherst LLC for a project located at 546 Amherst Street. Also with me tonight is attorney Brad Westgate from Weiner & Bennett, the project attorney, and Ian Buckley, um, the owner applicant representing the Buckley team. I'll provide a brief update on the project, after which we'd be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Okay. Here tonight seeking a one-year extension for a proposed change of use site plan to convert the existing vacant building from an educational office use into a restaurant use along with associated site improvements. This project was originally before the board and approved on January 20th, 2022. At that time, the project team was upfront in disclosing to the board that the approvals were being sought for the project as part of the Buckley's teams, Buckley team's efforts to purchase the property, but actual construction would likely not start until 2023, and that's the reason we're here tonight seeking an extension. Since most of the board was present for the original ap approval, my intent is to provide an update on the project as well as a couple minor changes being proposed and will not be pr providing a full presentation as I typically would do. However, I'm happy to do so if there are any specific questions or comments. Since the approval last year, the Buckley's team has closed on the property and has now engaged an architect and building design team for this new restaurant. Additionally, as part of this extension request, we are seeking to make a slight change in the pr previously proposed use within the building. The original project included a change of use from the, of the existing building into a 275-seat restaurant and 3,000 square feet of standalone <coughs> retail space. It is now being proposed to eliminate the 3,000 square feet of retail space and increase the total capacity of the restaurant to 350 seats. The total number of seats includes 75 seats within the outdoor deck and patio area, and that has not changed from the original approval. As part of this internal change, the Buckley team is now proposing to include a brew pub component to the restaurant. This is similar to many other establishments in town and it is intended for restaurant patrons and not outside sales. Based on our meeting with city staff, it was agreed that the brew pub component is essentially an accessory use to the, re to the re restaurant use. Additionally, I do want to note that the, in the original presentation, the business hours were represented as for the business hours for the restaurant were represented as 11 to 11. Um, my client is considering doing a weekend brunch, so I would also ask that we um, amend the record to, to ask for 11, uh, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, hours throughout the week. Um, there are no external or site changes being proposed compared to the original approval. Even with the proposed change in seating, the parking provided on the site is still well within excess of the minimum required by code. The original traffic study was also updated and submitted to the city traffic engineer to reflect the change in the proposed use and seating. This actually resulted in only one additional trip in the PM peak hour compared to the original study. Based on this one additional trip increase, our client is amenable to a revised traffic contribution in the amount of $19,600 as noted in today's staff report and discussed today with city staff, um, city engineering staff. Construction is scheduled to begin later this summer with an anticipated opening date of the restaurant likely around the end of the year. The conditions in the staff report are acceptable to us. However, we would like to ask for some consideration in rewording condition number three. We feel that there might be some ambiguity in the wording and suggest a condition that states all site plan approvals issued before January 20th, 2022 are null and void. At this time, um, myself and the project team would be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Okay, thanks. Uh, do I have any <coughs> questions? Anybody on the board have any questions? Mr. Barley? Just a quick question, just to clarify in terms of the, the group, how you said no off-site, is that I understand not retail, but would you like, would there be growlers that's like for off-site consumption or is it purely, it would be for like a bar restaurant? Use? Um, let, let me, can I confirm with my, sure. my client real quick?
Yeah, it, it would be exclusively for restaurant patrons for use during the restaurant um, okay. as part of the restaurant use. All right, thank you. Any other questions by the board? Okay. Not seeing any. Um, anybody in the public wishing to speak in opposition or concern or have a question on the plan? I don't know if there's anybody on Zoom. Um, there are, but I don't think that you're about that case. No, nobody? Yeah. Uh, anybody in the audience wishing to speak in favor? Okay. Uh, I'll open it one more time to the board. Any questions of the applicant or staff while we're in the hearing? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close the hearing and uh, start the meeting. Uh, pretty straightforward application. I think it was a pretty uh, well received first time around. Um, I don't really have any, looks even better to me, frankly, on the second time around. <laughs> so, so, so I don't have any questions on my end. Anybody have any comments or? Okay. Um, staff, as far as the re recommendation by the applicant on the change of the third stipulation? That would be correct. That was fine. Yeah, so you were, you were saying it would be all previous site plan approvals all issued? All site plan approvals. Approvals prior to January 20, 2022 will be null and void. Right. I mean, I think the, the, the point is, is that if we were to approve this plan, it effectively negates the prior approval. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, any other comments? Anybody want to make a motion? Mr. Barley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would make a motion to approve new business A22 0250 site plan, Weston Associates Development Company, Inc., um, one year extension uh, on existing site plan to convert uh, school to a restaurant use, We're located at 546 Amherst Street. Um, and that motion be with the finding that the plan meets the requirements outlined in site plan NRO section 190 146D with a total of three stipulations. Uh, stipulations one and two to read as written in the staff report, and stipulation number three to read uh, all previous site plan approvals as of January 20th, 2022, shall be null and void with the approval of this plan. Okay. So we have that motion to approve with the stipulations as stated by Mr. Varley. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Bollinger. Um, just real quick on the discussion um, with staff, did, as far as those hours, as long as it's in the record, we're good. We, we don't have, that doesn't need to be a stipulation or anything. <coughs> no, okay, no. that's what I thought. You can have them put it on the plan, so. Yeah, you'll have, that can be administrative. Yeah. All right, um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None? Any, well, any abstentions? No? Okay, that motion passes unanimously. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, continuing down um, with our agenda, um, next up I have new business conditional special use permit. This is case number 822-0240. This is B Lands Inc. owner, Hitesh Punjabi applicant and application and acceptance of proposed conditional special conditional use permit to allow synthetic nicotine and electronic smoking device store and lounge within 1,000 feet of the school. The property is located at 14B Railroad Square. Um, so this was <coughs> postponed. I don't think we took anything. Oh, do we have something from yes. Alderman uh, Cake? Thank yep. you, um, yep. Mr. Chairman. I need to recuse myself. Okay, sure. One, yep. I will go, go ahead. Thank you. Before we have, yep, thanks. So just clarify for me, this was just postponed. Never, we, we didn't take this into jurisdiction or anything at this point. So. All right. So for those uh, on the board, has anybody had a chance to take a look at this application? Want to make a motion as to whether it's ready for us to take jurisdiction? Ms. Harper? Yes, Mr. Chair, I will make the motion that the permit is ready for us to take ju jurisdiction. Okay, so we have a motion to take jurisdiction by Ms. Harper. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Bollinger. Any further discussion by the board on the jurisdiction? All those in favor? Jurisdiction? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. That motion passes. We have jurisdiction. Okay. All 
right, so go ahead, you can present. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, good evening. Andy Perlman, attorney with Pruning and Perlman um, here in Nashua. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, I am here tonight with Hitesh Punjabi, um, the, our applicant. Uh, who te Hitesh, uh, you'll hear me refer to him as DJ because that's his nickname. Also with us tonight is Glenn Kavanaugh, the site manager uh, for the Railroad Square site. And we are here proposing the uh, Vaporama um, of Nashua to be located at 14B Railroad Square. Um, this is the Portland Pie site um, that uh, used to occupy um, the same, pre same space. We are uh, 14B Railroad Square, the D1 um, district um, <coughs> in downtown Nashua. We're all familiar with Railroad Square. Mr. Chairman, um, it was one year ago tonight that this board approved a smoke shop, a vape shop at Port Pierre's. Um, I happened to be in the audience that night with another project, um, and, but I just went back through our meeting minutes to find it, and it was, happened to be one year ago uh, this very night. Um, and, I, and I opened with that comment because I, I, I want to tell the board that the reason, um, you know, there was great concern about the Adult Learning Center and the kids looking <coughs> right over Port Pierre's, and the reasons that triggered the new ordinance, what I call the 1,000-foot ordinance with, the, with, the, with regard to these smoke shops and vape shops, the reasons, the concerns that were being addressed in that ordinance are not present at 14 Railroad Square, primarily because the uh, closest schools, primarily the White Wing School, and there's another music school up on Lock Street, you can't see 14 Railroad Square from White Wing or uh, the school on Lock Street. Um, so that's, that's that was my opening comment. I, I don't believe the we, the same concerns that um, caused the board to consider the ordinance um, that we had with the Adult Learning Center and the Port Pierre site. They don't exist um, for um, this application. The um, I took a walk in the neighborhood. Um, and I stood on uh, the sidewalk in front of White Wing School um, and um, uh, in the corner of Grove and uh, Canal and walked up and down the sidewalk. And when I say that you can't see where this site is going to be, it's because there's a significant bend in this building. It's an unusual old railroad building. Um, and when you stand at the closest possible point to try and get your vantage point, you just can't see uh, people coming and going in and out of the front door of what was Port Pierre's and what we the vape shop. Um, plus, don't forget that we, we've never seen, we're all familiar with this area, we've never seen kids on the front lawn of White Wing because they are picked up and they, their play area is, is behind the building, um, as opposed to the adult learning center where the kids are right on top of the Port Pierre's. So they really, the, the same concerns are just, just not here. Um, I, I just recently uh, found out that there's a National Community Music School um, that seems to be part of the First Church, maybe the, the annex um, of the First Church building up on the, um, up on the corner, up on Lock Street, um, across from um, David's Funeral Home. And again, because of all the buildings, because of all the structures and whatnot, there's no visibility uh, whatsoever um, down from Lock Street down to Railroad Square. Um, and even if the concern that was uh, raised in the ordinance, the 1,000-foot concern, um, wasn't just sight, line of, line of vision, but proximity to uh, these, these areas. Um, you know, we, Railroad Square is a confluence of a lot of traffic and a lot of businesses. We're gonna blend in um, with all the other businesses um, in Railroad Square. Um, the other uh, concern, or the nearby, um, there's a vape shop at 60 Main Street, um, and similarly, we're, we're far enough away uh, that we won't have any overcrowding, we won't have vape shops one on top of another from Railroad Square to the, uh, tele the, the Telegraph building at 60 Main Street. Um, we're far enough away, there'll be no impact, um, no negative impact whatsoever between the, uh, by having two vape shops within 1,000 feet. The ordinance, uh, the new ordinance, requires that we have um, no negative impact um, to abutters or the neighborhood or the city, um, and we don't think we have any negative impact whatsoever. 
With respect to the uh, butters, we don't believe we have, we haven't heard any concerns from any of the butters. <coughs> as far as the neighborhood, the site's been uh, empty for over two years now. Um, the um, landlord, uh, the Sweeney family, um, they did not want to rent to another bar, or another restaurant, because as far as they're concerned, they've been nothing but problems. Um, this site, this uh, location has had a long history of uh, different restaurants and bars. Um, my favorite was uh, Headliners North. There were some good bands that would play in there and try and sneak in when I was a kid. But um, they, they didn't want to do that. They're happy that DJ is going to be the tenant um, for, for this site. The vape shop itself um, <clears throat> will be at least the third one uh, that DJ operates in New Hampshire. He runs uh, a store in Salem, and he runs a store in Manchester. I've been to the store in Manchester, um, and I can tell you that it is bright, it is clean, it is friendly. The staff knows their customers on a first-name basis. And the goal is that Nashua is going to be the premier shop um, for, for, for Vaporama. Um, it's a 6,500-square-foot um, space. Uh, we're not proposing any exterior changes other than some signage. That's all interior work. That's going to be first class um, interior work. It's a full gut renovation of the site. Uh, the display cases for the various products, top quality, museum quality display cases. Going to be, there's going to be a walk in um, humidor. Um, so uh, they are putting in some significant uh, investment into this site. So the ordinance <coughs> um, that we're speaking to has three components. We have to show that there are no um, negative impacts to the abutters neighborhood of the city, and we don't see that we have any. Um, we have the waiver criteria um, <clears throat> under ordinance 190-148-D, and my uh, initial application, my November 2nd letter, speaks of the waiver request, the two criteria of the waiver request. I can get to that. And then the third piece is the condition of use permit um, under 193333F, and I've, I've um, addressed that with our submittals, and I'll, I'll speak to that in a moment. <clears throat> the only comments that we, that we received um, was a letter uh, from Joe Mandola, dated November 30th, which prompted um, a good meeting that we had with the full staff um, on December 20th, and then I responded with my um, December 29th letter addressing Mr. Medoa's um, comments, which you should have. Um, Scott mentioned uh, that was a submittal uh, made to you folks. That, uh, hopefully you have that. Uh, and if necessary, I can go over that with you. Um, as to the waiver request, we have um, uh, two um, items, strict conformity, that pose a hardship, and the waiver would not be contrary to the in spirit of the ordinance. Um, you received a memo from Mr. Durfee about uh, an unusual permitting history uh, for this site, uh, and that's the first portion of our waiver request, um, that we received a building permit in, um, in April, and DJ relied upon that building permit um, between the renovation work and the display cases that he's purchased um, and the rent that he's paid. Uh, he's into this site for $170,000 already. He's committed to another 130, dollars and probably more than that because we're finding problems with the basement. All right, so um, if this is denied, we have a very significant hardship um, against the applicant. We don't believe that we're, we're contrary to the spirit and intent of the, of the regulation because, again, we don't believe we're overcrowding um, with, with uh, vape shops given the um, vape shop that's the smaller vape shop that's there at uh, the Telegraph building at 60 Main Street. Plus, again, we don't see that we impact neighboring schools uh, just because we're far enough away that they can't see them. Again, this is not the Adult Learning Center at Port Pierre's. As to the um, conditional use permit, um, I've submitted the, uh, I responded to the nine criteria, and Mr. Chairman, I could, I could either rely upon my written response, I could go through them if the, if the board does, uh, would prefer. 
Uh, we, we have a copy of them. Okay. We've addressed the, the nine criteria, and I'd be happy to answer um, any questions um, to those criteria uh, that, that the board may have. Um, and again, we got uh, comments from Mr. Mendola, um, and, and, and good comments, obviously. The sewer uh, line video that we're going to be doing, uh, we know that the utilities service the site, um, you know, standard engineering questions that, you know, we're going to work with the city as we, as we, um, you know, as we permit this site, and there's an $1,800 traffic corridor contribution, which is fine. So, you know, we, we've addressed, um, we believe we've addressed Mr. Mendola's comments. We haven't heard anything back. I do have, um, well, I do have um, uh, pictures of, of the, the interior building layout, plus the display cases and what, what the site's going to look like, if the board wants to uh, have copies of that. I didn't. Yeah, I think you can pass it around. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't mind. <clears throat> DJ is, um, you know, intending to really spruce up this, the, uh, the interior of the building. Um, it's halfway through a gut renovation now, um, but um, it is intended to be just a first-class operation. We did them make the request when we met with um, city staff, you know, can we pull out the, can we take out the sidewalk and redo it and all, you know, with all brickwork? Um, and the short answer was probably not, but we haven't necessarily given up on that because that's just the quality of work that, um, that DJ wants to put into this site. And finally, Mr. Chairman, um, we believe that we've addressed the concerns of the, of the ordinance, condition of use permit, the waiver request. But I do have to like, raise a fairness issue uh, that I want the board to consider. Uh, getting back to the um, April uh, permit uh, that was issued, and, and I'm not uh, laying blame on anyone if things happen, uh, but we did get uh, a building permit uh, in, uh, on April 11th, and from April until late September, DJ relied upon that building permit, spent a lot of money, paid rent, bought display cases, um, and then in late September, he gets a call saying, from the city saying, whoops, we didn't mean to issue that building permit. Could you please stop and come and talk to the board with, with this, with this uh, conditional use permit? So in short order, um, he meets with uh, Jerry Prunier. And the application was signed on December 14th. This was the last application that Jerry had, Jerry had worked on. Um, and then we lose Jerry. DJ's delayed. We get the application in. So on this, this hearing was supposed to be on December 1st. There was a notice snafu based upon the, um, on the agendas that went out. So here we are tonight. So we had delay from April to September, and then September till tonight. Um, so we're you know, ho hoping the uh, board will consider that, that element as well. And, and finally, Mr. Chairman, I just want to repeat, we don't, we don't see, you know, I was here that night when you approved the, uh, uh, the Port Pierre site. And honestly, I was surprised because I'm familiar with the Adult Learning Center. The kids were looking down and all those concerns were raised. We just don't have that with this, with this site. Um, and uh, we, don't, we don't see that we have any adverse impact with, the, um, with this application. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to answer, answer any questions. Okay, thanks. Um, I just have a question regarding the, um, it talks about um, the idea of a, um, a lounge in here, and I guess I, I don't understand the the idea of that. And maybe I'm not reading that right, or maybe that's in some of our other documentation. Where do you see that? Um, I don't know. Maybe it was in some of the summaries uh, we had. Um, store and lounge. There, there is going to be uh, like a seating area uh, yeah. for. Um, 
people to um, check out projects, pr products. The um, humidor, um, you know, could have some seats in there as well. Um, the porch is going to be used um, uh, as well. So, you know, there will be some seats in there. I'm not sure if it's an exact lounge. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Um, <laughs> well, so I'm told that there will be no seating. Uh, there was an er earlier concept where there would be some seating, but um, as of uh, right now, there's, there will be no seating. I'm not, I'm not sure where you saw a lounge area, but. Like I said, it's yeah. just in the application title. You know, oh, okay. That's the only place that I'm really seeing it, to be honest. But I am interested in what the function of the, the patio is and whether there's, you know, whether there's like the idea of people using that to try out the products or what? Or that that will be used, <coughs> right, okay. for the, for the customers. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Uh, other questions by the board, Alderman Teo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to clarify. You said that um, the schools aren't in line of sight. Um, how, just to to get. The footage. How, how far are they away from um, this place? You know, I don't know exactly, but when I was playing with the GIS and I put the thousand foot circle um, centered on 14B Railroad Square, um, it definitely captured the White Wing School. It definitely captured the 60 Main Street, right? So maybe it goes up to say 40s. I'm not, I'm not sure, but um, it gives you some sense. Okay. Right? I don't know the exact distance. That's fine. Thank you. Yeah. I think staff of you looked at that. Is it about 400 and something, or roughly? Mr. Chair, yep, go ahead, Ms. Thompson. In the city JS, I get from the corner of the White Wing building to the center of the um, yeah. proposed building, it's 470 feet. Okay. So close to 500. Yeah, about 500. Okay. Ms. Arker? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. There there's actually another spoke shop right across from Rail Railroad Square on Main Street. Did, did that not fall inside of the circle? I'm sorry, on Main? On Main Street, there's another smoke shop right across from Railroad Square. Oh, on Canal Street? Uh, no, it's on Main Street. 60 Main Street, right? No, not, not the one in the Telegraph building. There's another, oh. a cigarette outlet or something. Okay, I'm. So there's two. Uh, there's there's two nearby. I guess okay. Is my point. It's a tobacco outlet. It's just 27 See, Main Street. Yes, thank you. We um, uh, you know, it's a brand new ordinance, and and I, you know, you have to question whether or not some of these places would fall under this ordinance, All right? Um, you know, for example, um, uh, just because something sells um, tobacco products doesn't necessarily mean it's a it's a vape shop. They're, they're, um, well, there's some overlap. Uh, they're, they're in two entire, entirely different things. So we were specifically focused, in all honesty, on the 60 Main Street because it says Miss T's Vape Shop. That's the name of it. Um, and so if there are other stores that sell uh, a handful of vape products, you know, they may be there. Um, but we were focused on the 60 Main Street. So, so you don't sell, they won't sell tobacco products? Uh, they may, to be determined. Thank you. Other questions by the board? Mr. Hudson? <clears throat> Can you uh, describe what will be visible from the outside of the building? Like what kind of signage and that sort of thing? I mean, the interior of the building is great and all that, but I, it, I don't know, you know, if these students or whatever presumably wouldn't be going into that building, but um, what will be visible from the outside? Should somebody walking down the street, for instance? Uh, just, just some signage. Uh, um, and it can't be big signage because we're in the Historic District Commission, which which actually was, was what triggered staff to catch in September when they were going through the uh, um, historic <laughs> district commission signage. So it's just, you just, uh, no exterior changes. You're gonna see some a small sign out front, maybe some uh, signs and windows and whatnot, but that's all you're gonna see. It'll, look, it'll just look the same as what, it's been Portland Pie, Kathleen Hulians, Barnaby's, you know, it's, it's had a history. Other questions by the board? A question for staff, but uh, can we? Okay. Do you want to ask that one for staff? Sure. I, so just in looking at the, uh, 
the amendment to the ordinance, it refers to, just to get back to the point that Ms. Harper raised in terms of the other shop, facilities with a primary use designated with the superscript three. And I'm just trying to find in the table of uses what, what is superscript three, what is that designation just for clarity purposes. You're gonna have to give me a moment while I pull it up. Okay. <laughs> The, the superscript three refers you back to the thousand foot language. The, the superscript three is, well, is a footnote says, at the end of the table. Yeah, it says facilities with a primary use designated with the superscript three shall be a minimum of a thousand feet. So I'm assuming, and maybe just it's because the use table isn't updated, I don't know. Yeah, on the, on the back of the staff report, there was uh, a table. I don't know if that's an excerpt. Yeah, that's How it right. should have been revised or is revised? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Yeah, it's like keep going on the page. It's right oh, here. that's the one. Yeah. So it's this right there. It's, it's, it's basically uh, oh, okay. All right. tobacco, synthetic nicotine, or yeah, electronic no, smoking right. device, right. sales, and lounges. Oh, oh yeah, I guess it's Got it. Um, Sorry, Sam, I think we, yeah, we found it. Yeah. Thank Great. You. Other questions for the applicant by the board right now? Well, just so I understand, so, ahead, that, so it does cover tobacco it's products and tobacco, addition, synthetic or nicotine, or electronic smoking device sales, sales and, lounges. and lounges. So it, it does so cover tobacco. All the above, basically. <coughs> yep. So go ahead, Alderman Tebow. Yeah, so if that counts, the, how far is this uh, cigarette outlet on 343 Main Street? I mean, it's, it's got to be within 1,000. Yeah, I'm sure it's within 1,000 feet. Okay. It's and so with that, I, I, I would agree with that. It's going to be would, about a similar distance to 60 because it's just up yeah. this way. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's got to be very, yeah, very similar as the crow flies, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, all right, if there's no other questions for the applicant by the board, I'm going to go ahead and open up to public. And uh, I'll start with anybody wishing to speak in opposition or concern have a question. Just go ahead and come on up. I'll have Alderman Cleed come up first. And then um, go ahead and remember, state your name and address for the record. And uh, go ahead and. Mm -hmm. Alderman start. Patricia Clee, 9 Maywood Drive, here in Nashua. Um, I had rather kind of longish speech, so to speak, to, to speak to this, but I think I'd like to start with first, thank you for, for hearing me. Um, and um, Attorney Perlman um, did kind of touch on the, the fact that this came about because it went to the Historic District. Um, I'm a member of the Historic District Com um, Commission, and when I saw that, I went, huh? <laughs> um, all kinds of red flags went up, and um, I went to community development and said, why is this happening? I brought up White Wing, um, I brought up Miss T, I brought up the, um, the one that uh, Ms. Harper had brought up, and so on. I was a little concerned that so soon after the, um, the ordinance had passed that this was happening. Um, so that's how it started. So when it was discussed that there was a delay from April to September, there was no delay from April to September. The delay started in September. So they've been kind of put on hold. In all fairness, they have been put on hold since September to today. So, you know, keep in mind it's not April till today, it's September till today. Um, and yes, I cannot disagree that they have probably expended money and um, are on the hook for other money. But let me go back a little bit as to what precipitated this ordinance. Again, Attorney Perlman um, discussed the, um, the business that was opening up abutting, and he's right, abutting the Adult Learning Center, and where they abut is actually the children's play, playground. So when that happened, we realized that the, um, the land use code um, for 137 was woefully um, out of date. It only talked about tobacco and tobacconists. So what we sat down and we discussed, and I'm gonna back up one more. When it was brought to me about this whole issue um, from a number of um, individuals, nonprofits and so on, 
the first thing they said is, we have to stop this, and I do what I always do. I put up my hand and go, whoa, let's stop here. Let's think, let's think of what the ramifications are. Are we gonna hurt any business that's already in place? Um, what message are we sending out that Nashville isn't open for business unless it's a business we like? You know, so I get very concerned about this. I'm a very pro-business person, and, and this is something that does bother me. So I sat back, I talked to a number of people and so on, and I said, okay, as long as we don't, because Poor Pierre's was actually in the midst of, of starting. They hadn't opened up, they hadn't really done anything, but I did not want to affect them. Even though I would have loved to have been able to protect the Adult Learning Center, it, it was a done deal, and we were gonna leave it at that. And when I spoke to the Board of Aldermen, I was very clear um, that we were going to grandfather anybody in that at that particular time that had already been approved fully and, and, and so on. Now, so I'm gonna fast forward a little bit to September when I saw that on the Historic Commission and I, and I kind of had a <gasps> moment and with major anxiety. Now, the reason why we did this ordinance was so that what happened at Port Pierre's wouldn't happen again, but it wasn't just to stop the abutting. It was multifold. It, it was to stop, just like we did with gas stations. We don't want a gas station on every corner. And the truth is, by this going here, that's almost the definition of every corner. You have one you know, across the street, you have one around the corner, um, so within the 1,000 feet. And we chose 1,000 feet because we felt that that was a, an adequate amount. I believe gas stations are even further apart, but regardless, that's why we, we chose the 1,000 feet. And we didn't say it had to be within a sight line of any particular one. It's the message that when you open a business or allow businesses within the city, what it speaks of our city. And our city is slowly becoming, I know I hear on Facebook all the time, the land of Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks and so on. And, and the truth is, yeah, if you have too many of those, you send the bad message either, fast food and, and so on. You wanna have a good mix of businesses, not all the same type of businesses. Well, to me, this is kind of concentrating that type of business. Getting back to the, um, the White Wing School and, and so on, yes, I don't believe those students can stand there and look at it, um, but the reason why we put the 1,000 feet was for the simple reason when Poor Pierre's went in, it wasn't just that it was abutting, it was close to the Elm Street School. And it was close to a daycare center, I believe, as well. So we started saying, hey, look at these kids drive by with their parents and, and so on. So it's not just that. It's the, and I'm really glad to see that, you know, they're going to try to do as much as they can. Um, I actually had a little bit of anxiety when they referred to it as being an upscale, um, simply because it's just that means more people, more, more um, type of, of business that'll be there. And Railroad Square has its issues. It really does. You know, um, it, it, it's um, a beautiful area. Uh, it's my ward. It's Ward 3. Um, I'm very proud of everything that people are doing. And in, even in the documentation in the letter, I think it was referred to that um, this has been kind of a, um, I, I know I'm going to misquote this, but this is a business that basically hasn't been doing, nothing has been done with it. Um, and while they didn't use the word of revitalization, that's what came to my mind, is that they were saying we're going to revitalize the area, we're going to put life into the area. And that's all well and good, because now there'll be lights on in the building, et cetera. But just because you put a business in there doesn't mean you're revitalizing the area. It's the type of business that revitalizes the area. Um, and I cannot tell the owner what they can and cannot put there. So if they decide that they don't want a, a bar or um, a restaurant there, so be it. That's, that's their choice. But I can tell you that I don't want to see one more tobacco or vape shop or something like that go into that area because it doesn't speak well for that area when we're putting the same type of business over and over again. Um, so the, the concern that I have is, is the type of business. And I said that it's not just the, um, the fact that um, a, a, the lights are on and now it's revitalized. And, and I, I'm not comparing this to the, the type of business I'm about to, to state because it's nothing like it and I don't even mean to put it on the same level, but we're not gonna allow a strip joint there either just because the lights are on and because people are gonna go in and out of it. So we have to look at the type of business. We have to look at the concerns um, that will be, will be coming into to that business. Um, when we wrote this ordinance, there was a lot of negotiating going on, and some of the people will speak that helped 
create this ordinance. If, if some had their way, there would be no more at all in the city of Nashua. And that was actually spoken. You know, let's not allow this business in. And being a pro-business person, I am. I said, well, no, we can't do that. I, I would never stop most businesses from coming into to, to Nashua. Um, but I will say that I don't want that concentration of it. That's why we came up with the 1,000 feet. So there's two criteria that were really put. One is, if it abuts, the planning board doesn't even have a say in it. It's an automatic no. So if Port Pierre's were to come in today, they wouldn't come here. It would just be a no. Um, we put the 1,000 feet in because we don't want to take away the power of the planning board. The planning board is very important within the city, and we wanted them to be able to do that. And that's what you're going to do today. You're going to see who is having the most negative impact. Um, is it this business? Is it the property owner? Is it the neighbors? And remember, there are residents right behind there, the Jackson Falls condominiums. So if they're using this deck and people are out there smoking, um, and I don't know what type, of, he didn't say whether or not there really would be tobacco, whether it would be cigars or what it would be. This is going to be going towards the, um, the Jackson Fall residents as well. So they are there. May not be right there um, and so on, but there are residents there. It's not just all businesses that, that, are, lived, that, that are part of there. Um, and again, this is a unique situation. I've, throughout the entire um, process, I have not pointed fingers at anybody. I have not said, well, this person didn't do their job or anything, because I think everybody did their job. Mistakes happen, and that's exactly what this was. This was a big oops. And I don't want to see this oops become a precedent that now we're going to put this business in where it's within the 1,000 feet of a youth service organization, a school, um, another type of vape shop. And if you read the definition of 137, the thing that was struck from the original one was the word tobacconist. And what was put in its, in its place was, if, if I have it correctly here, I, be, I believe it was basically synthetic um, nicotine and, um, okay, let me just make sure I have this properly. So it, what was put in was synthetic nicotine or electronic smoking device sales in lounges. And the word tobacco was left there. So it does include all of them. It includes the tobacco. It includes all of those other things. The only word that was struck there was tobacconist um, from the definition or description, I should say, of 137, which is what this one falls into. Um, I believe that the, the business owners, when they started, they did everything in good faith. They, they um, were following the letter of the law and so on. It's just unfortunate that um, this has happened, that we've gotten to this point, that it wasn't until September that it was picked up. But again, as I said, you know, um, things do happen. I just want you to take into consideration why we did 022-10. It was really an important ordinance. It's important to a lot of people that work um, with children, um, and who also work within the city to try to keep the city growing and diverse and not all the same business, not all the same type of, of things. So if you have any questions about the ordinance or um, how it was created and a lot of work <laughs> went into it. So um, I, you know, I hope you take that into consideration. I know there's a financial hardship here for the business. I do think it has a negative, I just, this is one thing I do disagree with, I think it has a negative impact on that area. I think it has a negative impact um, on the residents that live there, and I think it has a negative impact with the amount of traffic, not caused by them, but just traffic going by there and seeing one more tobacco shop. We've all done that, we've all gone down the street and go, oh, gas station, gas station, gas station, car dealership, car dealership, car dealership, Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts. Now we're gonna be seeing tobacco, vaping, and so on and the like. To be honest with you, I would not want to see a whole strip mall of, of uh, tattoo artists in there either. Even though I think they're very talented people, I don't want to see the same, 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 same all over. So thank you so much. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I just had one. Sure. Um, when you were discussing the ordinance, was there any, ever any discussions about um, the distance criteria in something like the downtown use district versus like outside of that? Because a lot of our land use codes have different distance requirements for all kinds of different things. 
when it's in the downtown district. Mm -hmm. It seems like this one didn't make any provision for different district densities. Right, and, and that was, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, because it has been a little while since we, we actually had all this conversation, I believe that was done with purpose. So that um, like a general business area like Amherst Street, you didn't have them one right after another either. Um, they came up with a thousand feet. I think it was kind of um, a, a um, it was a happy medium for all of these different types of things. So whether you went with the, the general business, um, the D1 or D3, the highway business, uh, the P1, the park industries, the airport industries, those are the ones that fall within this um, 137. And so rather than trying to nitpick and say, okay, this area is gonna be here and this area is gonna be here, we just did a, um, a general discussion as to that the 1,000 feet kind of met that criteria. And we looked at the length of downtown, we looked at the length of places like Amherst Street and so on um, when, we, when we did this. And I, I think it was a, it, it allowed businesses to come in, but didn't allow them to be that close to each other. And I think right now, there's a concentration already right in that area and I'd hate to see more go in. And okay. I'm sorry that this got missed, but I don't think that the city nor the residents or the other businesses in that area should be punished because a mistake was made. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, any other questions from the alderman from the board? Okay. Thank you so thanks. much. All right, anybody else um, in the audience here? Come on up. Okay. Remember to uh, state your name and address and try to speak in the microphone. Hello, um, my name is Jay Guarneri. I'm at uh, 46 Layton Street, um, and I'm here speaking um, my concerns both as a member of the White Wing School Board and as a parent of a child at the school. Um, for, so as noted, it, this business would be within 1,000 feet of the White Wing School. Um, as also noted, it's not like it's almost 1,000 feet. It's closer to 500, 600 feet, so well, so it's pretty well with him. Um, also, I'd like to note that um, the primary play area, there is a play area out back, but the primary play area for the kids is out front of the White Wing School. Um, and my concerns, two of my concerns, aren't necessarily the kids seeing the vape shop from the playground, but um, the goal of the business, I assume, is to attract customers and seeing an increase of those customers walking by from various directions and some of them going past the school and perhaps using their vaping products or perhaps increasing the amount of vaping litter on the ground um, near the school, which there already is some. Um, and these kids, they're two, three, four, five years old. They're young, they're impressionable. They they soak up any behaviors, language, anything you see, they see. They soak it up, internalize that stuff they want to do. They see brightly colored litter on the ground. They want to touch it. Um, my daughter and I, we, we walk from Layton Street down to the school. She'll, she'll see the vaping litter, and it's usually some of the more colorful stuff. It's very attractive to her. And I have to say, no, that's definitely not something we want to touch. Um, and we also actually attend the uh, the community, National Community Music School, and we will some, we will walk down along. Uh, usually, we'll come up uh, uh, Lowell Street, so we'll come down along, and so we would be seeing a lot of that coming out from the school. Also, the the, the other most of the other parents who are using the car when the pickup line uh, comes, they come down Grove Street. And most of them, they're going to be turning right and driving right past this business, so the kids will definitely be seeing it at that time as well. Um, again, I understand the applicant's concerns about the timing and the money they've put into it. Um, I, I'm concerned about an increase in these vaping products visibility near the school when these, again, these kids are very young, very impressionable, and that's what they're interested in. So. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else in the audience? Come on up. I'm going to let um, Mike Dalsberg go next. I know he's on Zoom. He's had his hand up almost the entire meeting. All right. Is, it, is there anybody on Zoom wishing to speak? 
I'd like to speak if that's the possibility. Go ahead. Yes, hi, um, I'm Mike Affelberg. I'm the president of the United Way of Greater Nashua, located on Broad Street. I have a short statement that I wanted to read into the record. I did provide this um, in writing to Sam as well for you for distribution. Um, so dear Nashua Planning Board, with regards to item A220240 on your agenda, an application to allow for synthetic and electronic smoking device store to be located at 14B Railroad Square. We would like to express our objection in the strongest possible terms to this proposal. Since the zoning ordinance has been amended to prohibit such activity from taking place within 1,000 feet of schools or youth organizations, this plan would violate the spirit and intent of that ordinance, as well as the letter of the law. While the ordinance does not does allow you to put forth exceptions should the applicant demonstrate no negative impacts to the neighborhood, this will not be the case in our opinion. Our objection to this permit is based on the presence of White Wing School and Children's Winter Garden, which is significantly less than a thousand feet away from the proposed vape shop. Even though this permitting seems to have slipped through the cracks and the business entity has invested money in their build out, we still feel that the ordinance and the greater needs of the community must take precedence. Our hope would be that the business finds another suitable location, but not one which violates this ordinance, which was crafted specifically with the health and welfare of our community and its most vulnerable citizens, namely children in mind. Thank you for your consideration. I also wanted to comment that um, Attorney Perlman seems to have focused um, his comments on the visibility of the store. I remind you the ordinance doesn't speak to visibility. It really speaks to proximity. And if visibility was a concern, it would have been written into the ordinance. It was never done that way. It was written with regards to proximity. I was concerned about this application, but now that I've heard it described as the premier vape shop in New Hampshire, I can only tell you that we're horrified. So we hope that you um, disallow this permit and thank you for your consideration. Okay, thank you. Uh, go ahead. Yep. Good evening. My name is Janet Valuk and I live at 41 Roy Street in Nashua, um, Ward 6. And I did speak on that evening about poor Pierre's after they had already been granted um, their permit. And we understand completely that you can't undo something that you already did. Hence the, and I agree 100% with what Alderman Klee, Mike Appleberg, and the gentleman that spoke previously. I agree 100% with what they've all said. And I'm not gonna repeat all of that. Um, but I will say that I am very disappointed that this did, as Mike said, slip through the cracks. Alderman Klee called it a big oops. Um, I'm hoping that um, you do deny this application, but if you agree to allow it, my hope is that this doesn't happen again. Um, I agree 100% that we don't want a vape shop in every corner. I have worked in prevention my entire career in Nashua. Um, I was a health education teacher and I now work with the Nashua Prevention Coalition trying to um, prevent young people from engaging in, in unhealthy behaviors. And right now, the number one problem in middle school and high school, even though the age is 21 and there aren't any students in those schools that are older than 21, um, that this is a huge problem, that our youth are vaping at astronomical numbers. And we will be getting statistics from our youth risk behavior surveys that we give in the high school and the middle school very soon. And if any of you would like proof of that statement, I would be happy to provide you with those statistics. So I will also add that on a state level, all of my partners in prevention, the state is encouraging all of the towns to do exactly what was thought of with this ordinance is to disallow any more vape shops in the cities in, in New Hampshire, and it's gonna start at the local level. So this is something that 
everyone now is seeing as a huge problem and they want to eliminate as many of these shops or prevent as many of these shops as possible from popping up on every corner. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Uh, anybody else in the audience here? We should speak in opposition or concern. Anybody else on Zoom? Yes, um, I would like to speak. Um, Go my ahead. name is Joe Gleick. Um, I'm a resident of Nashua, and I'm also an officer of the First Church of Nashua, which we've been talking about earlier. Could you just get um, your, give me your address, please, too? Just sure. I'm at 25 Bicentennial Drive is my address. Thanks. Yep. Um, our, uh, we have the National Community Music School uh, engaged in, in our uh, facility at this point. And in addition, we have our own Sunday school and our own teaching facilities within the church, uh, all of which fall within the 1,000-foot um, uh, radius of, of this proposed uh, shop. Um, as other people have said, we don't believe that line of sight is an important aspect of this. We believe it's 1,000 feet is 1,000 feet. And although I haven't measured it exactly, we are clearly within 1,000 feet uh, between us and the um, proposed uh, vape shop. Um, the other thing I would like to point out is that even though uh, we're not, quote, in the line of sight, uh, if you look at the traffic patterns to get to our facility and to get to the community music school, you pretty much have to go down Canal Street, up Orange Street, and down Lock Street because Lowell and Lock Street are one way the other way. And so many of our people, when they come to the to the community music school or to the church, use that, that way to get to the church. Um, and so that is uh, another concern of ours. Um, the other thing I should point out is that um, we are a non-smoking campus, and part of the reason we have always been that way is because we have uh, children in our facility. As many of you know, for about 40 years, we hosted the Title I uh, school at our facility, and so we have had a non-smoking uh, on our campus uh, ever since that came about. And even though our campus includes the church and the, and the school, we also have three apartment buildings and an office building that are part of our campus that we control. And even in those facilities, we, uh, we are designated as non-smoking. We continue to have problems with people, particularly outsiders that walk through our, our facility that, um, that are smoking and leaving ashes and cigarette butts, et cetera, on our facility. And we feel that this might even further exacerbate that problem. So um, I think the First Church is, and the National Community School, I spoke with them this, this afternoon. We are both in, in, um, in, uh, in objection to having this, uh, this particular vape shop uh, located at that facility. Um, I, I really do hope they find another place that they can do their business. I don't want to put them out of business, but I don't think in, in this particular neighborhood this is a good thing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else on Zoom? Okay. All right, uh, anybody in the audience wishing to speak in favor of the plan? Um, if, if you're, are you part of the applicant or are you? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have the applicant come back up for rebuttal anyway, so you don't, you don't, you don't have to come up. So if there's no other audience members um, or listening members uh, that have any questions or want to speak in, in uh, favor, I'll go ahead and go to the uh, applicant rebuttal section here. So whenever you're ready. Chairman, I do have, as a chairman, I do have some responses. Andy Perlman, for the record, sure, um, go ahead to uh, uh, some of the comments. But first, <coughs> I'd like to have you here from um, uh, uh, Hitesh Punjabi, uh, DJ, the uh, proponent of this uh, of this store. Okay, sure. Come on up. Uh, just remember, state your name and address. Uh, my first name is Hitesh Punjabi. Um, Thank you for having me here today. Um, just I, address I real quick. <laughs> uh, oh, I live in uh, Peabody, Mass. 
Um, I didn't came to speak today, but there was a lot of concerns that were going on, so here I am. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, Mr. Andy will bring it up, or has brought it up. Um, I thought I should stand up and tell you who I am, what I am trying to do. So um, when, when um, I opened in Manchester, the goal was to not open a shop that people complain where kids can get their um, products. And I have opened a gold standard store in Manchester. A lot of people, um, obviously today I cannot show you, but a lot of people have been there. And before Mr. Andy took over my case, I urged him to come to my store before he takes my case because I wanted to show him what I do and how I do it. Um, yes, there are smoke shops and rape shops out there, but I frankly and truly believe I have created an environment which is safe, um, really strict on kids. Um, I have nieces and nephews, and I know how to protect them by stopping them or educating them uh, what kids should be doing and should not be doing. Now, um, the, the, the next thing that um, I want to talk about is, so I get customers, a lot of customers from Nashua. And they've been telling me and my manager there, who's uh, Glenn Kavanaugh, he used to work at Mist Vapors. Well, it's called Mist now. Uh, he used to work there for four or five years. And um, he was not being treated right by the old owner. So I took him under my wing. And we created this environment where we are a family. And a lot of people asked me, why are you not going to Nashua? Uh, one of the reasons was, that store owner was a good friend of mine back in the day, and we had this say, understanding that he won't come to Manchester, I won't come to Nashua, period. Even though people ask me that they need a store like mine, the Manchester store in Nashua, which will create a better environment, but a handshake is a handshake. Um, last year, um, 20, 2020, end of 2020, the manager of that store came to me and said, we are closing. So when they closed, I came to Nashua Town Hall. I did my due diligence because when I open a store, I don't open just a bodega or a small store where you have all kinds of um, um, signs on the window and it makes it look like a trashy store, which a lot of people are. I can't blame them. This is how they choose to do their business. So when I create a store, I know I invest a lot of money, and I know I make it beautiful that the city is very proud of. I know Manchester is very proud of. You can call any of the city members in Manchester. They are proud of my store. I have made it a very beautiful environment, a very clean environment, and a very strict environment. That's what I wanted to bring in Nashua. And that the, re the reason I'm telling you this is because I came to the city and I did my due diligence. I came in February uh, 1st, I came in February middle of the Feb, I came end of the Feb, end of March first week. I asked them questions after questions after questions after questions because I knew that I'm gonna be spending a lot of money in here which obviously it's very hard earned. I work 70, 80 hours a week to earn that money. It just doesn't come from nowhere. So I knew I'm gonna be putting money in there. And I asked the city again and again, is it okay, is it okay? Do I have to do anything to prove? Do I? They're like, yes, bring your Manchester pictures. I showed my Manchester store to every single person on the second floor, through my phone, through the pictures, um, through other colleagues that this is who I this is who I am. This, this is how I do stuff. I'm not just a regular guy who's just thinking of putting products in there and that's it. Go, <coughs> you know. So uh, after I did everything, they asked me what I'm going to be doing. I wrote exactly what I'm going to be doing. You know, I could have hid a lot of things. I could have, but that's not who I am. I wrote down what I'm going to be doing. I made a plan. Um, I. 
there is no lounge inside the store. It's a walking humidor. So um, w one of the ideas I got the walking humidor is, if, I don't know if anybody of you have been to exit five, the, there's a, a nice lounge, not lounge, a walking humidor cigar place. And I thought if you bring something nice to, to Nashua like that, Nashua would be appreciative that, you know, instead of these small, small bodega stores, there's a, something that Nashua is proud of. And that was the goal. So I created that nice walk-in humidor in the corner. If you look at the site, it's on the corner. Um, nothing of my product is touchable. That's another thing that I keep in mind with all the experience I have of doing this because if anything is up front, the kids would want to look at it, you know? So everything of mine is inside the showcases, hidden, locked. Hence, I ordered so many showcases. There's 52 showcases in my store, and I've paid a lot of money. If anybody knows how, how expensive showcases are, I've paid a lot of money. They're just sitting in a warehouse somewhere, and I'm paying the rent on the warehouse just to store them because I, in September I got stuck. So th that's why I got up. I just wanted to tell you, I know a lot of people say, oops, he slipped through the cracks. That oops is going to cost me almost what I've made in my life, my savings. That's one of the things I, would, I hope you guys consider, that that little oops is going to destroy this man's life. And my manager who's counting on taking on the store, and the two other employees who are counting on working here, and my fiance who's sitting back home right now praying that we don't lose all that money because I promised her that I will get her home money back, or either the home money or the house money or the store. And I promised her I'll bring the store money back after working hard in this store and we'll recover back in a year or two. So there's not just me, there's a lot of lives counting on the store. And um, that, that's the only reason I got up to explain you my background, who I am, how I, do, how I do business, and I just hope you guys consider how many things are in line. It's not just, oops, oh, he slipped through the line. Um, there is a lot of things over here to consider. I hope you guys consider that. Um, uh, neighbors, the problem is, um, I don't think if I bring the testimony of my neighbors in Manchester will affect anybody here. I, if they have made their mind, they have made their mind. It's going to be very hard for me to explain them who I am, how I am, unless until they come to my store. I could have brought testimony after testimony, and I could have brought four or five people who could have spoke with me, for me, but that's not who I am. I don't put peer pressure on other people. I just show my work, and I, I hope people judge me by my work and who I am as a person, as how I treat human beings and everybody. So that's the only reason I got up. I just hope you guys consider that here's a human being who has done everything right. He did his due diligence. I did not just slip through the crack. It was not just a one-time thing that I came and I signed and I left. I was here over seven or eight times for like hours downstairs going through all the um, yes and no's, that's how I got the permit. And I started working because I got the permit. Um, I made a lot of changes, I demoed everything, because as I said, when I do something, I do it right. And uh, that's it. I just, uh, I just hope you guys consider that this is not just an oops moment. I have, this is my life, long work. And the reason Manchester loves me, the reason Salem loves me, because I do the due diligence and I make sure kids don't come in my store and they are completely off limits. So if, with that, if you guys have any questions, I'm ready to answer. All right, thanks um, for the board. Any questions for the applicant here? No, I, I think we're all set. Thank Appreciate you, thank you so much for giving me this chance. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, Andy Perlman again. <clears throat> I have a couple comments. Um, but first, I'm going to speak with you as a witness, not counsel. 
because um, DJ's uh, Vaporama shop on Main Street uh, on is in Manchester is on Elm Street, um, and I'm pr I probably live within a thousand feet of it. I live at the very end of South Commercial, uh, and he's, he, his shop is directly across from the Market Basket. If you're familiar with Manchester, um, there are I can tell you. I'm there every day. Um, there are hundreds of units of apartments being apartment units being built right now, surrounding his vape shop. There's no, and uh, as far as I know, there's been no um, issues of concern. Also, as a witness, <coughs> I can tell you firsthand, as I drive up and down Elm Street all the time, <coughs> all the concerns about kids coming and going and trash and the issues that were raised um, tonight, you don't see it. I don't see it. Um, I pointed the shop out to my wife. You just don't see it. It's just a well-run operation. I told you it's clean, it's bright, it's kind of wide open. Everything's in cases. Everything's controlled. So <clears throat> the concerns that were raised um, may be there for other vape shops. So you may have other vape shops that don't operate as well as DJs. I, I, was, I was thoroughly impressed with what I saw in Manchester. Um, now, a couple comments. Um, Mr. Chairman, when I was looking at the ordinance, um, when I first sat down with this, um, I had the same thought you had. The 1,000 feet is a one-size-fit-all approach to um, this ordinance wherever um, the vape shops are allowed in Nashua. There was no, there didn't appear to be any consideration for the density of the, of the downtown core as opposed to the, the uh, stretched out businesses and, and, uh, and uh, strip malls along Amherst Street. Um, and if we look at Railroad Square, think of all the businesses in Railroad Square, one on top of another, right? Um, and you know, you, you have uh, the First Church, you have White Wing, and they're concerned about you know the proximity. Well, look at all the other businesses around. Look at the, you have the porch at uh, P uh, Panucci's is probably the greatest thing ever, right? And they, they put the heaters out there for COVID, um, and it's packed all the time. People. Drinking, smoking, right? So, there, if that's <clears throat> if we're concerned about a vape share, a vape shop with everything interior to the shop, you know, look at the look at what Panucci's is. Um, Ms. Klee says, you know, we want a mix of businesses um, in our downtown core. We don't want these on every corner. Well, uh, you know that that's fine to say, but what's worse? You want a shop, an active, you know living, breathing shop um, in this space, in this 6,000, 6,500 square foot shape space, or you want an empty storefront. J.L. Sweeney, the owner of the pro property, will tell you DJ is the only one who's approached him in the past two years. They have not had any takers. No, no one been kicking the tires until DJ come along, comes along. So, you know, you have a situation where you're gonna have an empty storefront, right, or you can have a shop that is gonna be well run, well respected, and you, you, you're going to have, um, you're going to take away some dead space, dead space in a downtown core. Um, we, uh, you know, we understand uh, why the ordinance was um, prepared. I was here that night, and I, although there was talk of proximity, not so much line of sight, you know, the whole discussion with the um, with the adult learning center and the kids in the playground. Was that it was just right there. It was just visible. They were right on top of the uh, the poor Pierre's building, and that's just not the case here. It's just, it's simply not. You can't see from you can't see our site from White Wing. You can't see the site from the First Church or the Music School. So, you know, we believe it's unfair to tag us with the same concerns of the poor Pierre situation with what we have here because it's entirely different. So. I didn't hear <clears throat> our obligation is to show you that we have no negative impact on abutters in the neighborhood of the city. We believe we've done that. We believe we've answered the um, two waiver criteria and the condition of use permit. And so with that, again, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but we believe we've met the criteria and ultimately, you know, there's a fairness here. Um, you know, DJ, if it doesn't go this way, he just really got screwed by the city. And end of the day. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, questions of uh, the applicant? Attorney Cromwell, just yep. Thanks. Go ahead, Mr. Varley. 
Um, just two clarifications. I, I believe you, you touched on this in your original testimony, but has the applicant actually signed a lease for the space? Yes. Okay. And what? And, and that's. I'm assuming that's not like a month to month. There's some commitment. No, it's a it's a five year lease with um, two uh, five year extensions. Okay. And um, related, you, you mentioned that approximately 175,000 had been expended so far. Yes. Roughly, you know, just ballpark. How much of that relates to you know fit up of the space as opposed to you know purchase of inventory or things like that? Uh, I don't know for certain. DJ can answer that. Okay. But it's a combination of all of the above. It's demo work, it's contractor work, it's purchase of all the display cases, it's rent to the Sweeney's, right? Um, so you put that out together. Plus, um, to finish out the shop, he's looking at another 130 and more because, again, we're discovering basement problems, right? So that's going to cost. But if you want to break, break down, I can have DJ answer that. Yeah, and just, I mean, just very rough. Approximation. So mostly the money has went in. Just uh, go ahead and state your name again. Please. Sorry, Hitesh Punjabi from Peabody Math. Mostly the uh, the money has went into um, demoing and cleaning the area the, um, because it hasn't been used for so long. And the way Portland Pie was, they had like nine bathrooms in the middle of a whole floor. So I had to re uh, retake that bathroom out and. Um, the ceiling, with the way grandfathering thing works with the wires, they were wires after wires after wires after wires, which, as like I said, I don't just talk the talk, I walk the talk. I could have just left that ceiling. But I removed the whole ceiling. I, I, I took everything out. I forgot to tell you this, but um, the fire department was there. They're like, they don't make people like you. That was one of the best compliments Nashua gave me. That. I actually came to fire department and I told them I want this gone because I don't want a Mickey Mouse and just use the grandfather clause and just leave all the wires there. I actually removed every single wire. So there's zero wires on the ceiling, which I'm going to rewire. So I could have saved 15, 20 grand by not doing all that, but I choose not to do it because I wanted to do it the right way. Um, second, I, lastly, I didn't talk about something that I wanted to talk about. Um, the sign, I think one of you guys asked for the sign. If you look at my application, I did not ask for any sign on the windows. That's not who I am, that's not what I do. I only asked for the sign that's already there, which was accepted for Portland Pie. I was told that might as well put your window signs application together. Even the lady who was downstairs who been helping me, she sees me for nine months, she's like, you've been through so much. She was helping me, she's like, DJ, might as well put the window signs. I don't want window signs. That, like I said, that's not who I am. I'm not here to attract the kids. I'm here to give a special service to a group of clientele, and that's what I do. So according to, uh, to whatever you guys asked for the sign, that's the answer. I only applied for what was approved for Nashua for stores before me. I did not ask for any additional signs. So okay. that's any other questions? Alderman Tebow. So to attorney, thank you, Mr. Chairman. To the uh, attorney Proman's um, comments about uh, the Manchester site. So um, National Manchester, different railroad square, much different than Elm Street. Um, is there a patio at the one in Manchester? I'm just curious if it's the same as what would be here. No, there's no patio in Manchester, no. All right, so you know the people that live around there, obviously there's nobody outside using the product like there would be no, well, mostly, mostly a lot of people, uh, mostly, so it is in a downtown area, but mostly people come in a car, they grab and they leave, you know, the... But the, the natural one you're saying is going to have that patio that's outside, right? Yeah, so I am, uh, so uh, there, is, there is no product of mine that you just test it. So testing is not allowed. Testing was banned. What's the patio for, I guess? I'm trying to figure that out. Well, it's out. there, so it's a bonus for me to use it. It's not, I didn't, I didn't make the patio. It was there for Portland Pie. I just like to clear my area. Sure. That's another thing good you brought it up. The whole back of that area was so bad. And so, like there were trees, there were germs. I cleaned that whole area, the whole back. Like it looks beautiful. If you look at the picture, I, you can actually see how the back of the Portland Pie looks like. 
uh, and all the train tracks. Um, I don't even know how the train was allowed to pass that train track. I actually took the liberty and asked my demo guy to clean the train tracks for you guys, which obviously, uh, the only reason I'm saying is because I got a chance to speak. I don't say all those things because that's just a human thing to do, clean out so the train doesn't tumble, you know? Yeah. But I cleaned out the train tracks, I cleaned out the whole back. You know, the only reason the thing, I wanted to beautify it more, the only reason I stopped is because of all these things happened in September. But, but do you but, plan to use the patio, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, yes, yes, okay. I'll be very honest, yes. With um, people using the product, huh? if they want. With people using... Yes, but there is no exit out of the patio. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the big... Thing, big thing to consider. There is no exit out of the patio. You can, you can. Uh, the only exit will be the emergency exit, which I'm, which I talked to the fire department when he was there, and um, I asked him his opinion. I'm like, instead of me coming up with the idea, why don't you help me? And the, the general was amazing. The fire department, they're like, there's a special kind of thing you put on on the door that tells you that's an emergency exit only or only used when there's an emergency. So there will be no exiting out of that patio. That um, I have made very clear to the city from the day I put my application, very, very clear. I don't want anybody, first of all, it's in my interest because then people can rob me and just run away. So first of all, it's in my interest, first of all. Second, the, um, I don't want anybody to be just coming and just sitting there. You know, I, it's, I, that's not who I am. You have to come through my door, explain me who you are, and if you are accepted as the clientele, if you are, because I have a very high-end uh, store, I want you to have respect for other clientele, and then only you're allowed to go to my patio. And like I said, you're not allowed to leave, you're only allowed to go in there. So I have made that very clear, and I'll do anything for the city to make sure that's all emergency, emergency exit only. Great, thank you. Yes. Anything else? Okay. Any other questions by the board? Mr. Hirsch? Yes. Is the, uh, is the patio an important part of your business? Is it no. It, it just came with the store. Is it, is it bringing value to your operation, helping no. create, create additional sales volume or whatever? Uh, no. It's just a bonus. Uh, maybe uh, God is uh, uh, nice on me that I found this property that it was just a bonus because my other two stores don't have a patio. No. It seems like that would expose, you know, the activity to the public more than if we're all contained within the building. Like I said, the, the, the whole goal of that patio is to be not be used. It's only for if a customer wants to stay out there for a little bit because I am not accepting anybody from outside and there is no door to go in and out. Yeah. yeah. If I could. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, addressing Mr. Hirsch's question, mm -hmm. we would uh, be happy to stipulate that the patio not be used for customers. It's not used at all. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I don't want it. I, I, like I said, it was just a moment. I don't want it. Okay. Um, other questions of the applicant um, or staff or in the hearing for the board? Thank you. I think we're okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll just check one more time with the board. Any questions for staff while we're in the hearing? <coughs> Mr. Hudson? Yeah. I just have, I have one question, which I should probably know the answer to, but if we uh, grant a conditional use for this specific applicant and this business were to go away and another business came in proposing the same use, does this conditional... Uh, use permit apply to a future use by another applicant for the same purpose? Conditional use permits so are not like variances and they do not run with the land, so this would be for this applicant. Thank you. I Mr. Also, Peterson? I have a question for the applicant as well. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, my question is, um, aside from the vaping products, will there be tobacco products yes, sold on site? And that's what the humidor is for? Yes, or the cigars? The cigars, yeah. Okay, thank you. Are there questions for the staff or the applicant or in the hearing by the board? Yeah. 
Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and close the hearing so and move to um, the meeting. So, um, certainly an interesting case. <laughs> yeah, I can't be remiss in not um, mentioning, I feel like the planning board's been uh, asked to uh, serve a role that, you know, to clear maybe some errors that the city may have made. So, I'm not super happy about that in the big picture. But, you know, sometimes that's what we do. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm interested to see comments on what people have, you know. Mr. Varley? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, you know, to, to sort of follow on, on on your point there, I mean, I, I think we'd be in a very different situation um, if this case didn't have the procedural history it did. But we are where we are. Um, you know, we, we can't change that. It seems to me that, you know, as Alderman Clee was, you know, talking about the balance that the, the board of Alderman was trying to strike in, in developing this ordinance, it's worth noting that, you know, the, the change does expressly permit the planning board to waive the thousand foot requirement and it permits us to waive it essentially on the same basis that we would waive any other, you know, provision that would apply to a subdivision or site plan. Um, so it's the same standard that we're, you know, faced with all the time uh, when applicants come to us and ask for us to waive, you know, one provision or another of the ordinance. Um, and, you know, from my perspective, this seems to be a case that is ripe for application of the waiver given the circumstances. For one, you know, as, as the applicant has stated and as we've confirmed, he's committed substantial time and resources to this project in reliance on a building permit that was issued by the city. And I understand that that was a, you know, a mistake um, and it, it shouldn't have been issued at the time it was issued. but. But again, that's, that's where we're at. And, you know, it wasn't corrected for, you know, a period of six months. So it, it's not as if the applicant was made aware of this, you know, on a prompt basis where he could have, you know, potentially done something about it um, to, you know, mitigate the cost that he was incurring. Um, and I do agree with the applicant too that this situation is different than the poor Pierre's that was the genesis of the ordinance change in that, you know, this does not abut a school or similar facility. And again, the, the ordinance change essentially removed the, the planning board's discretion there. So there, there is no opportunity to waive if, if there is, you know, a situation where it's abutting. Um, and so I, I do think the situation is a little bit different and I would note that, you know, to Ms. Harper's point, there's, there's another tobacco shop um, that is, you know, within the thousand feet of the music school, it appears well within that and fairly close to, um, you know, the other school and the, the Miss T's that's at 60 Main Street also appears to be within a thousand feet of the, uh, you know, the, the Winter Garden. So I think, you know, for me at least, based on all of those circumstances, so the, the, the specific application, um, you know, the, the other uses that are existing, and in, in, in my mind, most importantly, the procedural history here and, and the burden that's been placed on the applicant, I personally would be in favor of, of granting the waiver and granting the conditional use permit because I don't think it's fair or reasonable to ask the applicant to bear the burden of the city's mistake here, um, I, I, not not under the circumstances in my view. So that's that's where I stand. Alderman Tebow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so you know, like both of you have said, this is a you know tricky. Uh, problem for the planning board to have because of the, the ordinance that I was, I didn't sponsor it, but I was obviously had to vote on it um, when it came up. And 
Uh, Mr. Punjabi seems like you know a great guy. He seems like a really good business owner. Um, but when I look at the the letter of that ordinance that I you know voted for, and you know you, you know Attorney Perlman brought up Panucci's. Well, we can't go close a business down, right? That's been there for a long time. So it's not like we can go close businesses down. But if one comes up and the law says or the ordinance says we should do this. I look at it and go, there are vape places, and there's one within that 1,000 feet. The schools are within 1,000 feet. So I, so I struggle, and I'm still not sure which way I'm going to go on this. I want to hear everybody's, um, uh, their, their views on it. But, you know, going by the ordinance itself, I would personally think that we shouldn't put it there. But, again, you know, I know I don't, I don't want to saddle him with that, that, that burden of, of the money he spent on it, and you know, to what everybody's saying, it's not the applicant's fault on that. So, um, but I'm, I'm really looking at the ordinance as it was written, and I know you, we have as a planning board the ability to, to do a waiver. So, um, that's my opinion right now, but I'd like to hear obviously what, what other people have to say. Yeah, I mean, I'll just add on. I, I think one of the things you said about not closing a business down, it, it kind of rings a little bit with me that. It's almost like we're applying it to a business that's already there <laughs> because the business was essentially partially constructed. You know, where's the line of, of, of a business that's there or not there? I mean, I, I'm struggling with that because I feel like applying the ordinance, it, we are applying it to something that was approved and was built <laughs> or partially built. Right. So you're, you're, you're kind of, you know, we're kind of stopping construction, if you know what I mean, like yeah. midway. So is that the same as closing a business down? That's a good point. It's not far off, to be honest. Um, you know, and I'm a, I don't love the, the situation. I don't love the having three vape shops or smoke shops close to each other. I don't. I don't think the the use is is consistent with the master plan. I don't think it's any of that, but I I, I am very sensitive to um, you know closing a business down. You know, I, what, what's the line? I mean, we could literally. I mean, looking at the at the the history here, it seems like it's about six days after the notice is when the building permit roughly got. It's in that ballpark, right? It's like a week or two, you know? So, I mean, we're, and we've got seven, six to seven months going on 10 months of letting the operation move forward <laughs> and, and, and incur costs. So, I mean, is, is that different than shutting someone down after 10 months? I don't know. It's, it's a tough one. I'm not sure either. <laughs> oh, this, yeah. Mr. Peterson? Uh, although I'm not a big fan of uh, tobacco products or vaping or these other addictive products, they are legal. And the applicant basically put forth his life savings to operate a small business. And for the city to give him a permit and then later on find out, oh, there's a zoning law now, you can't do it. I think uh, we uh, misled the applicant to um, uh, basically put everything on the line for us to turn around and say no. So I think at this time it's justified in um, in uh, uh, overcoming the, uh, the the 1,000 foot barrier, and I think we should allow this um, this applicant's um, project to go through. Others? Ms. Harper? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I, too, am having a difficult time. I did not vote for the business at Port Pierre's um, prior to the ordinance even being in place because I, I felt it did not meet the criteria. Um, so this business makes it even more difficult with what money the owner has put in. Um, and and I, have, I do have to think about it. I haven't made a decision. but. Uh, very difficult. Ms. Dodson? Um, 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, there's been a lot of discussion to the hardship part of this, and that's, you know, that's clear. Um, it's an unfortunate, I view it as an unfortunate uh, set of circumstances uh, to no one's fault, but this is a unique case where, you know, I, I, staff can confirm, but I don't believe there's any more of these situations related to this ordinance, correct? Um, I don't know if Sam shaking his, his head, no. Um, the, uh, the, the other part, uh, you know, is I believe the applicant has, has demonstrated um, no impact in the sense that with no signage in the windows, no uh, use of product on the patio, which I certainly would have t taken issue with if it, that wasn't screened or some other method. Um, you know, I think, I think this, uh, you know, the hardship's a strong part of this, but also just the, the, uh, the case itself and the presentation, um, you know, is unique, unique and, and enough that I don't believe there will be, you know, that impact. I also am not a fan of vape jobs tobacco use in general. Um, uh, I think the ordinance is a good ordinance. I think it was, uh, it was, uh, in, the intent was good and, and going forward um, certainly will be applied accordingly and we won't have this continued proliferation uh, given that we have this new ordinance. But I view this one as one that was kind of caught up in the mix and in the transition period here and for, for a host of unfortunate circumstances we are, we are, we are today and for that reason I, I'll I think I'll support the support the uh, approval, Mr. Arif. Yeah, I, uh, I'm also very much against uh, smoking and, and vaping. I don't think they're they're healthy and appropriate. However, he did make a good effort, a good faith effort to to uh, you know uh, comply with the ordinance of the city, and uh, basically he was encouraged and spent a lot of money. I think we unfortunately are kind of in a jam. We have to really think level to go forward. Alderman Tebow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I, I don't think the hardship, you know, makes the people that that either work or live around there feel any any better that you know we would be voting for a vape shop to go there. Um, you know, it's uh, it's unfortunate that and it's a shame that that. Uh, who, and I, I don't want to put any blame. But somebody, you know, we made a mistake somewhere, and uh, you know now. You know he spent so much money on this, and and, and uh, you know you made a good point when I brought up the Panucci's. I, I thought that was a good point. Are we shutting a business down? But you know, I mean Main Street has a ton of vape shops. It's not just the top of the hill; it's the bottom of the hill too. They're all over the place. So eventually they're going to bust each other out, and you know there won't be as many because you only have so much competition. I would I would assume, especially if we're trying to uh, people are out there trying to prevent. Pre you know, prevention out there. Um, but, I mean, I do feel bad for the people that, that live in that area or, the, or uh, the schools and the music school and all that because it's not their fault that the city made a mistake and it's certainly not, um, you know, and it's also not the, the applicant's fault, so. <coughs> okay. Any other comments by the board? Mr. Peterson. This, uh unique situation seemed to arise basically due to a timing problem. The applicant went through the normal permitting process only to find out there was this new 1,000-foot uh, rule ordinance. So I think in the future, uh, this timing problem won't happen again and we'll be able to, able to um, approve these things w without so much uh, confusion and conflict. So. Um, this will never happen again. What else? Okay. All right. Well, um, does anybody want to entertain a motion either way? For discussion purposes? Mr. Varley? Uh, I'm willing to, to make the motion. Doesn't look like anybody else is jumping up to do that. Uh, I would make a motion to approve. Uh, old business project A22 0240 conditional use permit. And um, that would be with a finding that the application does meet the requirements outlined in site plan NRO section 190 133F. Um, and you know, more specifically with respect to the, the requirement. Um, 
that the the use proposed not be within a uh, thousand feet of of the light classified use or a school or youth serving organization um, I would make the determination that uh, strict conformity with that requirement here would pose an unnecessary hardship um, in would not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulations and specifically um, that that hardship is based on both the, the procedural history here and, and specifically the, the detrimental reliance of the applicant on the city's issuance of a building permit um, which should not have been issued consistent with the ordinance and in the extended period of time on which he relied on that, that building permit before it was brought to someone's attention as well as the specific proposal that the applicant is making and the determination of its um, of its lack of a of an undue or, or harmful impact relative to the use, um, and so with that in mind, the the one stipulation that's including the included in the the staff report that is the request for that waiver from the thousand foot requirement, um, I would have that read is granted with the finding that it will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Yes. Can, I, can I ask you, we also did receive a letter from Joe Mendola dated November 30th. I think it had gone out the last time. That Could that be incorporated as a condition of approval that prior to the issuance of a building permit, all those comments shall be addressed to the satisfaction of the Division of Public Works? Probably at these chair point side of the plan. There is no plan to be signed. That's why I had um, the bill, Isn't building, the building permit already issued? It'll have to be reissued. Um, and then also um, the uh, not using the uh, porch as a stipulation. Yes, yeah, we have that on the record, but I agree we probably should include that as a stipulation. So I, I will add to my motion by um, putting two additional stipulations in the approval. The second would be uh, prior to the reissuance of a, of a building permit. Um, all of the comments in the letter from Joe Mandola dated November 30th, Correct. 2022, will be addressed to the satisfaction of uh, the Department of Public Works. And then uh, a third stipulation indicating that the, the patio area um, associated with the property will, will not be used by patrons. Stetson. Just a question: Is it within our purview too to prohibit signs in the windows, or is it, or is it not? I mean, I, the applicants made testimony of the fact that that wasn't what he does and that sort of thing. But I, I, I want to drive by and have the signs, see a whole bunch of signs in the windows advertising. I would say no because he would be entitled to those signs per okay. the regulations. It's his uh, if he opts to not apply for those signs, he's he's free to do that. But I don't believe the board has the authority to limit uh, signage that would be granted or, or permitted by right. Okay, thank you. All right, so we have. Mr. Barley's motion to approve with the three stipulations is stated. Do we have a second on that? Second. Second Mr. by Chair. Mr. Bollinger. Okay. Any further discussion by the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. So we have uh, that motion passes with uh, one no vote and the rest yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank All you, right. folks. All right, so moving on with the um, the agenda here, um, just to clarify a few things. New business subdivision plan case A22-0159. That case has been postponed to January 19th, so that will not be moving forward at this meeting. Uh, other business, the review of tentative agenda to determine proposals of regional impact. Has anybody had a chance to take a look at that? Let's do that one quick. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bollinger. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to make a motion uh, based on the technical review meeting of December 19th, 2022. There are uh, no projects of uh, regional impact. 
All right, so we have that motion for no um, proposals of regional impact on the tentative agenda by Mr. Bollinger. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Hirsch. Any further discussion by the board? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. That motion passes unanimously. All right, and then regarding these discontinuance, um, is, is my understanding like the second one, um, it, that's not ready for tonight. We should. Do you, I'd, I'd rather take these two together if that's okay. Is that work for the applicant of these? Is, <coughs> is there a reason why the first one would need to be discussed and, and talked well, about? Well, Mr. Chairman, if yep. you want to take them together, then we would uh, <coughs> defer to the uh, to the board at, uh, on that. Yeah. The reason why we wanted to. Let me back. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Andy Perlman, sure. uh, yeah. attorney pruning Perlman here on behalf of the Flatley Company. Yeah. Um, so there are two petitions uh, to discontinue. One with respect to the subdivision project uh, right. that the board approved earlier last year, and then one with respect to the flex space building. Mm -hmm. um, the subdivision pro the Flatley Company wants to get the subdiv subdivision project going. Okay. And there's no, there's no, there are no legal issues to hold that back at this time. Mm -hmm. The flex space building discontinuance. We have some um, we have some legitimate legal questions, and that I'm working through with Attorney Leonard yep. um, and Mr. Durfee and, Ms. and Mr. Sullivan. So that one's not ready uh, for, the, for the for the board to consider. Um, but if the board is willing, um, the father of the company, one of the conditions of approval with respect to the subdivision um, was that we address we discontinue Dozer Road, right? right? And that one's ready to go. They do want to get the subdivision going. However, there is some merit to taking them both together. And if, there, um, if the board would prefer to take them both together, then I would suggest we uh, continue both discontinuance um, recommendations for to the first meeting in February. Yeah, I, I think efficiency-wise, I'd rather do that because I feel like we'll just go backwards and talk about both of them. And, and Mr. Yeah. Chair, I was just going to add, <laughs> yeah. if, if both um, petitions take care of the the entire length of Dozier Road. Let's let's wipe the slate clean potentially with with one okay. one swipe. Um, okay. okay. Just as opposed to doing it piecemeal, it, it's an odd little stub of Nashua history how that even came to be. And I think if there's one opportunity to potentially so, okay. clear that, then I, I would yeah, recommend so going. Let's not do it twice. Yeah. All the way clear. Uh, thank you, um, and I do agree with um, Mr. Bollinger's uh, statements and comments. The only question I have is this is more of a procedural one. The public hearing is not scheduled until January 11th, where the public would come out, and I, I know that there has been some issue about at least one portion of, of this, so would it not benefit us to wait until the public hearing so we can kind of hear what the public has to say and so on? Mm. I, I'm not saying that it's a good or bad thing. I'm just, I, I, I want to put that to you as to. Yeah. Well, um, as well as to Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I think the public hearing is just one more input to the, to the board. I mean, this is essentially a referral to the Aldermanic board, yeah. right? So so our piece is like kind of separate. I think they both come in and the. Okay, but thank I, you. I just don't like the piecemeal and the stuff because I feel like we, we end up spending a bunch of time tonight. We did all then we go right. back and do it again the next time. <laughs> <laughs> fair, so. fair enough. All right. <laughs> yeah, I get it. So, okay. thank you. So, uh, yeah. I don't know if you need a formal continuance, but um, no, I think we can do our motion on our end to just. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I'd ask for somebody to just do a a quick motion to to um, postpone review of these referrals to. When, when did you want to do it? The first one in February. Is it, is it? Yes, and if I may, yeah. Um, yeah. so we actually do need to add some language to this motion to continue, uh, because mm -hmm. per our discontinuance ordinance, if the board does not report to uh, the infrastructure committee, uh, it is deemed uh, a positive recommendation. Obviously, okay. we have a reason to postpone. We want more information. So please, in your continuance motion, uh, state that. Uh, Part of the reason uh, to continue uh, is for more information, and that will be reported uh, to the Board of Aldermen by way of the Infrastructure Committee. Okay. Yeah. So does somebody want to make that motion? Um, I'll, Mr. Bollinger? I'll, <clears throat> I'll give it a shot, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. Um, with regard to uh, other business, uh, case numbers two and three regarding um, street discontinuance of various portions of Dozer Road, 
Uh, I'd like to make a motion to continue those um, considerations until uh, first meeting in February as the board is requesting additional information. Yep, do we have that date? February 2nd. The second. Okay. Uh, February 2nd, if I'm, I may amend that, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. So we have that motion uh, as stated by Mr. Bollinger. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Hirsch. Any further discussion by the board? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. That motion passes. Thank right. you very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Have a good Appreciate night. It. Um, so we don't have any other thing. Anybody have any discussion items for this meeting? Yeah, we'll do the annual real quick here. Um, but let's adjourn this meeting. Does somebody want to make a motion to adjourn this? I'll motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so we'll uh, adjourn this meeting. And then I'm just going to go ahead and take a formal take a vote on it. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's on the adjournment. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion passes. We're adjourned at 855. Now, regarding the annual meeting, I'm going to go ahead and um, call to order the um, annual meeting for the 5th of January 2023 for the City of Nashua Planning Board. Can we do one more roll call on, on that one? Certainly, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Mayor Donjus. Mike Peterson. Here. Scott LeClaire. Here. Adam Varley. Here. Maggie Harper. Here. Alderman Clee. Here. Dan Hudson. Here. Bob Bollinger. Here. Larry Hirsch. Here. Alderman Tebow. Here. All right, so we still have everybody here. We have a quorum. So um, the purpose of this annual meeting is just for the nomination and election of officers. So, um, I, you know, we had um, planning reach out and um, get recommendations on slates from the members. Um, did, did that get forwarded to Ms. Harper? Okay. Yes. Do, do you want to report on that? And, um, you know, if there's a motion that makes sense, you can make that as well. Um, yes, sure. so the information I received from Mr. Durfee indicated that all of the current uh, members of the board um, would like to re-elect the current officers, which include yourself, Scott and Claire, Chair, Mr. Varley, Vice Chair, and myself, Maggie Harper, Secretary. Okay. Um, so does anyone want to make that motion, or do you want to, Ms. Harper, want to make that a motion? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. Um, so I'd like to make a motion mm -hmm. to um, re-elect the current officers, uh, Mr. LeClaire, Mr. Varley, and Ms. Harper for the next term. Okay, so we have that motion. We'll take a second and then we can discuss. Second, second. by Mr. Bollinger. Any discussion by anyone? Okay. Hearing none, um, go ahead and those in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> None. That motion passes. Okay. Um, that is the agenda for this annual meeting. And um, any further discussion by anybody? Okay. Evelyn Clee? I just want to thank all of you that st stood up and um, accepted those roles. I know they're not always that easy, but uh, um, someone's got to do it, so thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right, I would take a motion to adjourn. Mr. Hirsch. Motion to adjourn. All right, so we have a motion to adjourn by Mr. Hirsch. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion passes. We're adjourned at 8.58. All right, thank you, everyone. <laughs>